This video should be a short video that explains how to make predictions out of a simple linear regression model. So I'm just going to start from this framework where we theoretically have already fit a line through a cloud of data for some x-axis numerical variable and some y-axis numerical variable. Now, once you start getting into the world of predictions, people often phrase the x-axis variable as the explanatory variable because it is doing the explaining of the y-axis variable, which people often call the response variable. Now, the thinking here is that y is responding to the explanatory variable. As the explanatory variable changes, the y variable changes. And in this case, we can see that as x increases, the y uh, variable increases. So the response variable is responding to whatever the explanatory variable says. And when it comes to predictions, we are invariably trying to make guesses about what value the response variable will take on dependent on our best fit line, which has intercept probably about here, beta naught hat, and an estimated slope, uh, we could say like that, given some value along the x-axis. So if you picked the nth x observation, you should be predicting the nth y observation. But theoretically, you could plug any x-axis value in. If you just arbitrarily chose x prime, then the model would go all the way up to the line, come over here, and then predict y hat. And maybe you want to call it y hat prime to keep them all tied together. We're going to go through an example where we have done basically just this, given our picture. We've already fit a model, so we have coefficients beta naught hat and beta one hat. We will pick some x-axis values and try to make predictions for the response variable dependent on some arbitrarily chosen values of the explanatory variable. So over here in R, I've got the basic framework we were just looking at all set up. I've loaded the library ggplot2. I've read in the donkeys data set for which I've already made this plot and drawn the simple linear regression line through the data. I can go ahead and fit, let's just run all these just because, the model from which I get out the coefficients, the intercept, the estimated intercept and estimated slope on the explanatory variable girth. Now, if I wanted to make a prediction using vectorized math in R, what I would basically want to do is take my vector beta and multiply it by a vector that gives me one times the intercept, and then I'll eventually want to do plus, and then in this second position here, I will put some number, let's just pick as if we looked at the axis girth and chose the value 90, we want to predict what we expect height to be when girth is about 90. And in fact, in this case, we expect height to be about 90. So this vector over here is just going to multiply by the elements of beta, the vector of coefficients. Once I do that, oh, whoops, there we go. Once I do that, these numbers themselves don't make much sense, but if I added together that vector, I would indeed get out, based on a girth of 90, an estimated height. So if there were a theoretical donkey who weighed ex or who had girth of exactly 90 centimeters, we would expect their height to be 90.5 centimeters. So we could just call that y hat sub 90. And you could, of course, do that again. Let's do y hat sub, I don't know, 109. You could take the sum of the vector that multiplies the coefficients times the intercept 
and the value along the x-axis that you want. And indeed, for a, let's see, 109 has got to be about here. For a donkey, theoretical donkey that has girth of 109 centimeters, we expect their height to be just below 100, indeed, like 98.5 centimeters. So that's really cool. In fact, R gives us some really nice ways to do this sort of prediction for all x-axis values we have in our data frame df. There is a function named model.matrix that takes a fitted linear model object and let's just print that out before we store it and notice what it's creating is a brand new matrix with a whole column of ones that essentially represents the analogy of this one and all the x-axis uh, observations we had in our original data frame. This column here is taking the value analogously to that position. So we could then create this model matrix. I like to name it capital X. And what we'd theoretically want to do is walk down every row, every observation in this model matrix, and we would like to apply this function to every row in this model matrix. And theoretically, because we already did for girth equal to 90 and girth equal to 109, if we looked at the first and the fourth observations of whatever applying this beta times this vector of length 2 and add them all up to every row of this model matrix, theoretically we should get out y hat 90 in the first observation of the predicted values and y hat 109 as the fourth observation of predicted values. So I'm going to use the function apply across the model matrix X, I'm going to specify the margin 1 to say apply the following function down all the rows, and the function I'm going to apply is going to take one row at a time, and it's going to go add up beta times each row. And I'm just going to call that y hat as a vector. And indeed, y hat at the first observation is exactly equal to y hat 90 and y hat at the fourth observation is exactly equal to y hat 109 just like we said i would spend some time looking into this function apply it turns out to be a really common pattern in many different programming languages because it takes an arbitrary function, they call them anonymous functions, it takes an anonymous function and applies it to each row of some multi-dimensional object. Let's say that one more time. Apply takes a multi-dimensional object to apply across a specific dimension, in this case one means for every row, apply the anonymous function. Take a row, multiply it by the coefficient vector beta, and then add up those things. What we will get out is an entire vector of the predicted heights for theoretical donkeys that have weights equal to everything we observed in the girth variable.